couple of trips to a slice of vinyl. Hi hi everybody and welcome to another haul video. I've just recorded two thirds of this video. Um, my camera, well my phone, which is my camera, uh, just stopped filming. Uh, it's not the storage was full, it's not the battery's dead. Don't know what's happened but it hasn't saved what I've already recorded which is really annoying. So I'm going to have to go through again but it means that one of these things I was the sealed record which I opened but obviously it's already been open. Ah right. <laughs> Where did we start? Okay, so I've started with explaining, you may have noticed, regulars, new shelving uh, for my vinyl. So that set of shelves with the CDs on was in the corner, then I had the unit with all the box sets on. Uh, smaller box sets are now just sort of stacked randomly there. Bigger box sets are in the cases my vinyl was in. Um, and then, yes, vinyl's in there. So it's alphabetically by first name of artist, because that's how I store the music. Uh, A to C, D to F, G to I, J and K, L to O. Then we've got... That's all my Prince albums. And then that's all my Prince 12 inches. Uh, rest of P, Q and R. S and T, U to Z is the one with hardly anything in. And down the bottom I've got soundtracks and comedy records and comedy box sets. I'm sure some of you are interested. I've done that quicker than I did it first time. Okay, so yes, two trips to a slice of vinyl this month. Sort of not enough in each one to do separate videos. So I've combined them all for this. Up until half an hour ago when I started recording this. Um, hadn't looked at a lot of them, but obviously now I have. Both visits prompted by messages from Kieran saying he got some print stuff in that I would, might be interested in, and I was. So, first trip, he told me he had... I've, I've done this both times, picked them up <laughs> different ways around. Um, two copies of Let's Go Crazy on 7-inch. Uh, Let's Go Crazy I didn't have on 7-inch, so I would have wanted one anyway. But these have got different sleeves. That one is a, a paper sleeve. And that's a cardboard sleeve, so I had them both. Discs are identical, so I won't show you them both. Save a bit of time. Uh, he'd also got in a couple of albums that I was after for my collections of specific groups. Uh, a squeeze one, which unfortunately had already sold, but I asked him to save this for me. This is the jams, this is the modern world. He said, I will. Um, but you're going to want to look at it because I hadn't noticed when I got it in but there's some water damage to the sleeve and sure enough there is um, and also he then spotted there's no spine on it he had a couple from this person the person he bought this from that were like that so it must have been a quirk of theirs for some reason um, but the vinyl spine nice polyline sleeve you can see water damage carries through onto there but the disc is pretty much perfect um, and because of all the damage he let me have this for four quid so as, uh, as I've already said um, if I find a copy in a decent sleeve even if the record's naff I can always Frankenstein it uh, so while I was in there I picked up some other bits so this is Fuzzbox's Big Bang Fuzzbox aka We've got a fuzz box and we're going to use it, which is just written in the top there. Band I really liked when they're out. Um, this has got Pink Sunshine on it, International Rescue, and their cover of Yoko Ono's Walking on Thin Ice. So for £7, I thought, yep, I'll have that. It wouldn't want to even div it over, I just pulled it out of the racks. Full lyrics on there. And this is on a nice custom label. Uh, none of this I've listened to, none of this I've cleaned. Although Kieran does clean all his records, they just get, it's just a hand clean. So I do like to spin them through my spinner before I listen to them. With, same with any, even brand new vinyl, I always spin clean because it gets rid of the static. 
Uh, then one of the other bands who I intend... God, I'm getting serious deja vu. Uh, one of the other bands who I'm going to collect all their albums is Slade. And this is their Play It Loud album. This was their first album as Slade. I had an earlier album as Ambrosia Slade. Um, this is the first Slade album I've got. I've got a greatest hits on CD. And you may have seen my unboxing of their singles box set, which I'm about halfway through listening to. Um, I appreciate this is not going to sound like the Slade we know and love. This is before they went all glam. But again, a polyline sleeve. And some Polydor. And it was once owned by Susan Lethbridge. So as well as sticking her name in the middle of a record and on the top corner of the sleeve, also took it upon herself Ooh, in there. to cut out a picture of Noddy in his glam pomp and stick it on there as well. But yeah, I don't mind things like that. It makes them unique as long as the music plays. Okay, next up, the reason this wasn't sleeved was he'd only just got it in and he'd run out of sleeves because I wiped him out last time I went in because I bought 100. Um, and he didn't realise he couldn't really spare 100, but never mind. Um, but I saw he'd, he'd got this in and I thought, oh, if he's still got that, I'll pick that up. This is going to be in my Martin Listens to Classic Albums for the First Time series once I've come up with a catchy name for that. If anybody can think of a catchy name for that. So if you've not seen my previous couple of videos where I've mentioned it, I'm going to get classic albums and please suggest some um, that I've never listened to and I'm going to listen to them for the first time and then talk about them afterwards, talk about my reaction to them, not actually review them, but you know, as I say, react to them if you like. Um, and I need a catchy name for it, preferably one that alliterates with Martin because Martin meets, Martin uses Martin's merch. That's the, the route I like to go. But yes, so although I know many songs of this from covers, I don't really know her versions. So I'm looking forward to giving that a spin. And this is on Ode Records. I think this was £8. But see, I haven't priced it up because it was in, that, in the stack of stuff to go out. So there's no sticker on it to remind me, but I think it was eight quid. Uh, then he was clearing off a load of, clearing off, clearing out a load of records. Either he had duplicates of or just, you know, stuff that wasn't worth much more than a fiver, but it was mainly stuff he had duplicates of. Um, I was flicking through them and he, he came and said to me, if you find three, you can, you can do, buy two, get one free on them. Which I think was just, a, you know, something he was doing for his regulars. Um, and I did. So first of those was the best of Dion Warwick. Nice original 65 pressing by the looks of it. Nice glossy front and matte back. Um, and this is on Pi International. Really thick heavy vinyl. And this has got anyone who had a heart. Uh, Wishing and Hoping, Unchained Melody, What Did I Say, Make It Easy On Yourself, Zippity Doo Dah, Walk On By, and some other tracks that I don't know the titles of. One, well, don't know from the titles, should I say. Uh, and also in those, I picked up Genesis's Invisible Touch. So Genesis are a band I'm going to collect. I have their greatest hits, or whatever it was, the greatest hits, but their compilation that's, it was three CDs. I showed it recently um i believe or oh, it's on a video that's not gone up yet one of the two but i discovered i liked all periods of genesis so i thought i'll get their stuff so picked up invisible touch with a nice c genesis live hype sticker on it uh eight tracks five of which were singles including all of side one plus throwing it all the way on side two and this was from when they were on virgin i believe Yes. A nice inner sleeve. So I know some people are a bit snooty about this era of Genesis. But I really like it. Uh, 
I remember the third one that I got in that set was Blondie's Plastic Letters. So again, Blondie, I intend getting all their stuff. I've got, again, their greatest hits on CD. I've got um, Parallel Lines on a CD that was given away with one of the newspapers. I don't think I bought the newspaper working in a shop that sells newspapers. We had some left and I just took it. Took the disc. Um, and I've also got their last album... Oh, what, Pollinator. I bought a bundle of that because it came with a side print, so I've got that on cassette, red vinyl, and seven inch vinyl box set. But yes, I like Blondie, so, and they're easy enough to find most of their stuff. So I thought I would start collecting them. So as you can see, this is on Chrysalis. Uh, Classic Letters contains Denis, and I'm always touched by your presence, dear. Those are the two tracks that leap out to me as being the hits. Okay, and I also picked up back in the main bulk of the shop, uh, Temptations Greatest Hits 2. I picked it up, I looked at the track listing, I saw Ball of Confusion and Cloud Nine, and I thought I'm having that. So this was eight pounds. Um, bit of damage to the back sleeve, but nothing major. Again, glossy front and matte back. Shows it's an original to me, anyway. I might be wrong, but it's always a sign for me. And I was going to say, as I mentioned, but that was on the previous video. I find it hard to resist these, oh, Motown obviously, um, compilation, greatest hits of classic soul artists. Because they always sound so good on vinyl for a start. I mean, they're classic songs anyway, but you know, they were made for the vinyl era. So yeah, that was a quick pickup. Don't recognise any of the other songs on there, to be honest. I might know them when I hear them. Uh, and then this one was the last one on that first visit. This was the sealed one that I was sealed until 20 minutes ago when I started, when I was filming. Um, yeah, when I went in in October, I got home and later that day, I think it was later that day or the next day, he had a delivery of new and sealed records and this was in it and I thought oh if that was there I would have got that thankfully it was still there when I went in so this is Rage Against the Machines self-titled debut album it's just an amazing album full lyrics on the inner sleeve uh, there's a download code in there as well and that's on Epic Legacy nice heavy vinyl and I'm finding a lot with new vinyl that when you pull them out the inner sleeves they're covered in little bits of cardboard but it's not the case on this one so that's good but yeah this has got killing them in name bomb track take the power back bullet in the head wake up all well-known songs from this particularly killing him in name obviously which was christmas number one at one point so yeah that was my first trip what i'm going to do i'm going to stop this and then start recording again just in case i have any more problems and we're back, but you won't know any difference. Is it? I might have to do a little wobbly time effect or something. Um, yes, so then last when well, last week, weekend before last, first of all, he messaged me to say that he'd found this in his cupboard full of stuff, which is, as you can see, Kiss on seven inch. Um, I have two copies of this, but this is such a nice, clean, especially for sleeve copy. But I said I'll have it. Um, and then a couple of days later, a local artist whose name is Dan Williams. Um, he does artwork, you'll see what they're like in a minute, of musicians that um, Kieran sells for him. I don't think Kieran takes anything from it. Um, and it's cash only because it goes straight to the artist. But these all prints, the, the original of, of them go for hundreds of pounds, but these were £30 each. And he showed this one and I said, I'll have that. It's a nice one of prints. Now, uh, when I sort of saw the picture of them, I assumed it was just sort of a page of music, you know, printed off with a drawing on top, but it's not. If even the music in the background is hand drawn. Really clever stuff. Um, I really like it, but my uh, there is a little part of me that's annoyed that it's a parade era picture of Prince on Purple Rain music. I would have preferred Purple Rain era Prince 
or say kiss in the background so that it tied up but really like it so that'll be going up on my wall and then when I went in I decided uh, I think this is all just from three different artists uh, these are bits I'd seen when I was in previously and hadn't picked up but I thought I decided I will get them so Genesis and Blondie there's a load of that in here and then the other artist song want to be collecting that he had a load of stuff from his Elvis Costello so first up these aren't in group order for some reason they've sort of fallen out of order um is and then memory free by genesis for seven pounds so this was their 1978 album i think it was their seventh album if i recall from when i looked just a bit earlier um and their first after steve hackett left so it was just mike rutherford tony banks and phil collins by this stage hence the title and then memory free uh, the only track on this that i know is follow you follow me or certainly the only one that I recognise as definitely knowing. A bit of sleeve damage, but doesn't matter. Uh, and this is on Charisma. This is a label I always like because it's Monty Python's label. And a nice polyline sleeve as well. Always in favour of because it means one less inner sleeve I have to use. So yeah, Elvis Costello is another, all I've got of his prior to this is his greatest hits, which I really enjoyed. So I thought he's another one I'll start collecting. So this was £8, this is Get Happy. Um, the damage on the sleeve is art, it's part of the design uh, and it's also done retro style as well with the glossy front and the matte back uh it's got i can't stand up for falling down on it i think i also know new amsterdam and temptation but i'm not 100 percent certain uh 10 tracks on each side on a single disc but there is a disclaimer saying that they've done it so that it won't affect sound quality so i've never heard that this is a bad sounding album so hopefully that's right it's on Bang Records, sorry, Beat Records. And then we have, let's pull this up, which I didn't do previously. So with Blondie, so the one I showed previously, which is Plastic Letters, was their second album. This was their debut. This is Blondie. This was ten pounds. <clears throat> okay, so this has got Ex Offender, Man Overboard. The two tracks I think I know from this. This is on Chrysalis. And this is where I got to when my camera died. So after this, everything's new. A few light marks on the record that hopefully shouldn't affect playing. And again, polyline sleeve. And then we have about right, Elvis Costello, Elvis Costello and the Attractions, Punch the Clock. I suppose I'm doing it for the others, so I might as well do it for him. Get the discography up. So, Get Happy was his fourth album from 1980, Punch the Clock. Is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth album from 1983. Uh, it's got Let Them All Talk, Every Day I Write the Book, Shipbuilding, which is an amazing song. Uh, I think that's the only ones I know from this. This was £10. Oh, 
the lyrics on my sleeves. Sleeve, rather. This is on F beat. So presumably it's just a further version of the beat records that the previous one was on. Again, lots of, quite a few, well, not lots, but not as many as on Get Happy, but quite a few tracks on there. And then again for ten pounds, his debut album "My Aim Is True," uh, which has got Alison. That's the only one that's leaping out to me. I'm sure, I will recognise at least one or two others on there. This is on Stiff Records. It's on Stiff Records. Again, nice clean copy. The, the sleeve, you know, the corners are a bit worn, but you know, it's a 40 something year old record, 42 year old record now. Uh, I think this is the last Elvis Costello one I picked up. This is Armed Forces from 1979, his third album. Uh, this has got the interesting fold-out cover. I don't know if that's something that was always the case. Let's have a look, see if it says on. Uh, So this doesn't look like it's the version that at any point had for a EP inside because it would have a sticker on it. So it's a, a later, it's not the initial pressing, but it must be an early one. A little bit of damage on the bottom, but if you're not familiar, it's a fold out sleeve designed by Barney Bubbles. <laughs> it's not the easiest thing to show. The inner sleeve. I mean, if somebody's put this in a polyline sleeve inside the inner sleeve, which is nice. <coughs> and nice. They designed, and this is on Radar Scope Records. Um, so this has got accidents will happen, Oliver's Army. the only two that I instantly recognise from Armed Forces. I believe this is widely considered one of his best albums. I was going to say his best but I'm going to hedge my bets. So then after that we'll move back on to Genesis. Yeah, last three of all Genesis. So this is Wind and Wuthering, which was the album before and then there are three, so it's sixth album I think. So this was Steve Hackett but post Peter Gabriel. It's a bit of shit, not well, I hope it's not literally, but something on the sleeve. It's a nice matte textured sleeve. I've also initialed it, whoever owned it previously. Uh, I don't think I recognised any of the tracks when I looked at this. No, I didn't recognise any of the tracks on this, so this will be interesting. I'm sure one or two of them are probably on the compilation I've got, because I think every album was covered on that. I might be wrong, but I think every album was. So also on Charisma, nice and clean. And that was, that was £10. <clears throat> and 
Then we have their, what I think is their 10th album, self-titled Genesis album from 1983. This was only a fiver, it's a very common album because it was a big hit. Uh, I've got Mama, and that's all on it. I'm guessing this is a later reissue as well because it's got a barcode. Might be wrong. Seems a bit early for barcodes on records. Nice inner sleeve. And this is on the Vertigo. Uh, can I see any indication whether this was later? Looks like it's a German pressing actually. Or the blurb on the outside of the label is in German. <coughs> Excuse me. Printed in West Germany. Yeah. Yes. The German release by the looks of it. And then finally, if we get this in, we have Seconds Out, which is a live album from 1977. So this is Gabriel era still, I believe. I'm assuming anyway. Uh, maybe not. No, it's not. Oh, look, there's no pictures of him. Uh, let's have a look. It's the last to feature Steve Hackett, though, to his departure, so no, it's definitely not Mike Rutherford era. Um, not um, Peter Gabriel era. So ignore that. Uh, bit of something on the sleeve. But this was £8. Double album, so I don't mind a bit of damage for that to the sleeve. Original inners and charisma of a custom label. Yeah, so a couple of successful trips. Um, in the end, he gave me that Prince Kiss single, which was nice of him. I don't intend going back again this year. Obviously, we're getting to the stage where the C word's coming and that costs money. So that's where my funds will be diverted. But if after I've bought everything that I need to buy people, um, I've got a bit left, I might pay another visit. I've also got a couple of full loyalty cards, so they're worth a tenner each. So if you get something in I can't live without, I've got those to use if needs be. Um, but yes, that's my haul from a couple of visits to a slice of vinyl. What's this video? About half an hour, I think, over the two halves that I've recorded. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>